not to since the last job. As you remember, <clears throat> the big end was gone. These are old stock plus two thigh rollers. That means that you gain eight thighs, so we've taken <clears throat> clearance, cleaned up the pin, cleaned up the rod, uh, and we've now got perfect big end. So we've assembled together. This is um, an old alpha true, they call it an alpha true, truing bearings, you see. There's about a thigh run out on that side. We try on that side, put it on the knife edge rollers. There's just about a thigh, a thigh aside, which is perfect. So then we've got to do the small end. That's the piston. We've got some new rings for it from um, local good firm, Cox and Turner. Not a big price, 51 quid for a set of rings. So that was handier than going to Halfords, wouldn't it? You've got your oil ring and two compression rings. This is the barrel here. We'll have a look at that in a moment. This is the piston. We've got a new gudgeon pin. Managed to find one in our stores. So um, now we've got a problem. We put a new small end in, but it's too tight. It won't go through. So we have to reamer that out. This is a set of reamers, adjustable reamers, what they call them. So open up bearings, right? So you've got to get the size you need. That looks sort of handy there. So we'll see if that goes through. Yeah, it's a bit really tight. As you see there, what I've done, that size small, undersize, that size up. So what happens when you adjust the reamer? So you take that off there, and then you bring that down, and you pull that down there. So that gives you more cut, as it were. We wanted to go the other way, so I'll take that. So that should just give me enough room to get through here. Maybe maybe a little bit more adjustment. No, it's not. So I can just gently cut that through there like that the same applies to the piston when you get the size of that you run through the piston so we've got the, the new pin new gudgeon pin a bit lucky so we'll just try that and that's relatively nice fit just touch it in. maybe maybe in the yeah that's not too bad in the middle See, that's nice and free. Bit of oil help the job along. The oil supply for the small end, when it's splashing around in the crankcases, the oil gathers there. So that's nice and loose now, you see. Right, we've got that done, flywheels. Piston, we've cleaned the piston up, got the new rings to go in, um, dressed it up, it's new circlips. Put that to one side. Drop onto the flywheel assembly. So we've got new main bearings in here. That's uh, new mains. Um, luckily, they're sort of still standard size. Um, the old ones you see, where you can feel that how gritty and worn out that one is. So we've done the final drive gearbox, final drive bearing, and the main bearing. So we'll drop the flywheel in now. Um, dry side, the one with a spline on it. We're just, I'm just going to do a dry build today um, to make sure everything fits. So that's gone in through there. Um, we've got a spacer on that side there that pops in there. So we'll put that in there like that. And um, I had to shim this up with that extra shim there to get the clearance because you remember when we pulled the engine apart it was dragging against the flywheel so uh, we've shim, shimmed it into the center so that's your primary drive right so that's that sort of side assembled briefly as I was saying on alignment the con rod should be in the line of the split of the crankcases see that's crack on so now we've got the other side of the crankcases. That's your push rods there. Um, so we'll drop this onto here. 
All right, up then, crack on then. So that's gone together nicely. See if the file, see how nice and smooth that runs. Have a look in here, the timing chest. So this is your valve lifter. Uh, that actually slips into there like that. And that goes on the top of that. And if you look at it, how it operates, as that lifts there, it lifts the valves. So when you want to start it, you can take the compression off the engine so you can kick it over easy because the valves open to let the gas out. Right, gearbox. So what we're going to do, <clears throat> so we're taking it apart for the moment. So we're going to stick this lot together. When you're working gears, use a bit of common sense. If you've got them wrong, they don't match up. That one goes in there, that's a sliding dog, so. So we'll poke it through here. Like that, just check it out. So that one pops on there. That's it on there, and then we pop that one on there. Right, we've got all the gears hooked up together. And um, we'll drop this on here now, so let's hope it sort of goes together reasonably sensibly right that was pretty satisfactory right so that's the gears more or less sorted out there that's the exhaust cam because it's got the oil pump drive on it so we pop pop that in there but first of all we'll fit the half time pinion which you remember we marked there so the keyways there so that goes on there like that on the key you remember we put these marks our marks on here so yellow to yellow right this one here you don't forget the shim on that side and um, we drop in get our timing marks you generally find the valves see they're working nicely there so I think that'll be okay for the test run so so that's the kickstart ratchet on there, which as you see, that's how the kickstart works. Spins that way there, and then you pull it like that on the kickstart. So we drop that on. Obviously we'll put a decent gasket on on the final build. Right, that'll hold that. So that's all the gearbox up together. On the back is your selector mechanism. This was your <clears throat> selector here, posi stop. So every time you change gear, the, the mechanism comes back to the vertical. So that pops on like that in the thing. That's how you change your gear. So, um, barrel next, I think, really. So. so if you have a look in there, you can see nice finish. It's just cleaned it up nice, ready for the, um, new rings so <clears throat> again we painted painted the barrel and head heads come up quite nice we welded that on you remember that was broken off you probably forgot forgotten that fin was broken off so I welded that back on again painted it up we've got a new exhaust valve two new guides and the inlet so what we're going to do now is do a test to see what sort of job Miller's done what you do, you pour a bit of paraffin in there. If it runs out here, you've done a quick job. Perfect. No leaks. So that's the exhaust checked out. So this is the inlet. Ten out of ten. Go to the top of the class and hand the books out. This is the cylinder head. So what we do. We lap the cylinder head onto the barrel. There you go. So what we do, we just go around here with a grinding compound. We put it on there. There you go. And you got you grind it like that until you get a nice finish. So you get a perfect seal. We'll see how we're getting on. Yeah, it's pretty. Pretty sharp all the way around there. Um, so we clean all that muck out. We'll stick the piston on. So piston, you remember we marked it front. 
So we stick that in there. <clears throat> so we've got a new gasket. We, we went down to Holford's and got those gaskets. So, um, but you make them. So gasket pops on here. I won't bother putting the rings on because I've checked the ring gap. If you have a look at the ring gap, it should be literally two thigh per inch. So the bore of this is 75, which is roughly three inches. So your three twos is six. When I went to school, feeler gauge. There you go, nice tight, tight seven thigh clearance. Test the other ones. Oil ring, we're giving the oil ring a test. Perfect. Bit of a clean up. I won't pop the rings on because it's um, a lot of extra work for no reason. But I don't like doing that. Rubber mallet, just give it a little tap. There you go. Perfect. Stick a three yet, not on it, stop it from flying apart during operations. It's nice to have a good tight fit in the mouth of the crankcase because it holds the whole engine together. Forgot to mention New Imperial um, unit construction. They started off about 1934. Uh, New Imperial were unit construction. Before that, most of the manufacturers used a separate gearbox and a separate engine, like the, old, the 7R AJ, for example. Later, separate gearbox, separate engine, which made it very, very complicated. Extra plates, extra work, extra. So this is unit construction. Tip, valves on the rock. So what happens if you've got the valves on the rock? You can't really see it there, but those valves are opening and closing. You see, on the rock, right? Don't forget this engine runs backwards. So that can, that one there is opening. So that's your inlet. So you're sucking in fuel there, right? You're, so then you're coming up on compression. You're having your ignition, explosion go down. And then this is the exhaust valve, which is coming up, pushing all your burnt gases out the exhaust, right? And it's now top dead center. So this is starting to open here to let your new gas in. Okay, so you're going down, filling up the chamber with gas, compression, ignition, bang. Piston go down, giving you that, that power. Exhaust, piston coming up to push all the fuel out. Getting ready for the new charge, easy peasy. That's the ignition, my marks, the manufacturer's marks, but I'm quite happy with that, but if I wasn't happy with that, I would put a timing disc on to clarify the uh, exact manufacturer's um, timing. But as I say, basically on the rock, three eight before dops head center, and you should get an engine that works pretty good. And don't forget again, like Miller when he was a kid, trying to time the thing Top before top dead center when the thing was running backwards, so we had to actually time the piston coming up as it, as the engine runs backwards. That can fool a lot of people. It's good to have the castrol or mobile oil because most of the manufacturers used to put <coughs> the recommend make of oil on their bikes, and we obviously got a some money from the manufacturers to put that on their bikes, which helped the cost of production, early publicity. So we can drop the head on there. Um, so that goes on there. Why have I stuck that on there? Well, if you remember when we took it apart, the valve caps are marked though, so you didn't get them mixed up because often you find that there's different valve caps sizes. So you don't want to get them mixed up. That should sort of slip in there. Easily. There you go, popped on. The oil pump pops on there like that. And uh, we'll, we won't bother screwing that together because it's elementary. That gear goes on there, that drives the um, chain to, to drive the Mag Dino. So that goes on there, that performs like that. 
the rocker box we have fattened that all up, cleaned it all up, check the shims, check the inflow, all pretty good. So we drop that on here. We've got a bit of a hold up because we need the push rod tubes chroming, but all the chrome stuff's gotta go off together. So unfortunately, there's gonna be a bit of a delay. But anyway, that those, flip, those sit on there like that. Push rods go in the center. And then you drop the rocker box head on like that, and that comes up and bolts onto there. So there's your basic engine. I'm going to get that polished up because it's not very nice, so that'll pop on there like that. The mag dyno, the mag's been rebuilt at present. We don't do that in-house, we get somebody else who knows what they're doing better than us to do it. So uh, we'll have the dyno back and um, that's the little breather in the top there. It's got to be cleaned. Do you remember that one on there? I suppose you've forgotten that. Anyway, that's the little breather. Right, we're going to tighten up the... Um, Final rise sprocket. On here you've got two, two sizes of chain. So what you do, you put that on there like that. That there on there like that. You stick a bar through there. Right, so that's how you lock your final rise sprocket up. Off, chain. If it's a bigger sprocket, you could have that side of chain. Or you could have an even bigger chain. But that's just a lump of metal with a couple of bits of chain on it. No big deal. That's the drain plug there, so it's got to be the bottom in it. So we stick that on there like that. Um, helical gear, as you see. Um, clutch plates. Sometimes we have trouble getting clutch plates out. If you lose a little magnet, it helps helps the job along. See the nice clutch plate there. You see that loose clutch plate fiber job. Happy memories, remember that in the 150 New Imperial giving me trouble. <clears throat> These ro rotors, quarter of a quarter, were really worn out. So once again, like the big end, we've gone to plus two thigh rollers and we have took a nip out of the um, drum on the grinder. So we now have got a much tighter fit. Now you see we're, right, we've really done away with a lot of that backlash because we just done away with a float on the clutch drum. And we, it may be just a bit noisy, but to counteract it a bit, we can probably put slightly heavier oil in, which will cushion the um, gears. So that all, all the clutch plates together, that pops on there. So that'll pop on there like that. So um, you won't be far away. That's the car. All needs fettling up a bit and um, it'll pop on there. Remember we welded that flange up. What I'm going to do too here is introduce a bit of modern technology. The old boys never tweaked onto this but this one's not quite the right size but you need a 28 mil bore instead of a 32 mil bore. So you pop that on there like that and then you put that on there like that and that means that when the engine gets stinking hot that is a heat block so the, so you don't be running on red hot fuel because cold fuel is much better than hot fuel. So there we go, 20 exhaust port to go on. Um, and um, hey presto, all these studs have gone off for zinc plating. Uh, they'll be back uh, later a couple of days time. So then we can um, do the a detailed assembly, double check everything again, but it's important to do a first build so that at least you know everything fits before you start getting into the thick of it, you know? Come on. Come on, boy.